there's a guy come out here the other night on a, a loudspeaker and uh, stood out there in the street and and he calls himself a defender of Christ. Uh, that's pitiful. Uh, that's pitiful. If you are a Christian, you don't handle things like that. You don't. You don't get out there and and, and, and do all the stuff and that was going on out there in the streets. Just all the cussing and everything else. I mean, that ain't that ain't God. I don't care who says it is. It ain't. You don't handle things like that. <clears throat> Yeah, Alabama woodsman, you dumb redneck. You ain't supposed to get out there in the street with a bullhorn and be cussing all out there in the name of the Lord. Earl? Are you on the computer again? I tell you what, you low down, did it for another. My daddy was right about you. He said you weren't never going to run your head in the back. I gotta go. Hello everyone, thank you for stopping by the Alabama Woodsman, a Christian channel where doctrine absolutely matters. Today's video, but first this. All right, folks, thank you for stopping by the Alabama Woodsman. If this is your first time, I hope that you will come back and see what's being reviewed in the, uh, in the, in the times we live in. And if you are a return viewer, you obviously like the freak show. Uh, thank you for coming back. So it's no secret uh, you've, you've probably just watched drew bloom's uh live stream and if you've not watched it um be sure to i'll try to leave the link below uh watch that video um if you didn't watch it live and you'll you'll see what this is all about um no secret that uh drew and the woodsman went to florida this weekend or this week <clears throat> to uh share some truth so I want to explain how uh, my channel kind of works just briefly. I normally drop my videos right as Drew closes in prayer. And I do that because he's, he's not asked me. In fact, he's told me that I don't have to do that. But I feel led to do that. I, 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 it it's, can be difficult to, uh, for like me to drop a video Saturday or Sunday morning and it be the exact same topic that he's spoken about. So um, I I don't like that. I, I it would be unnerving for me to to do a live stream uh, on a video that someone just did just dropped an hour or two before or a day before. Um, so I want him to have the freedom to say what he wants to say, how he wants to say it. And I make my videos during the week and. Then I upload them, and then they drop after you know a while. Um, so we 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 don't coordinate um, what we say. Uh, in the past, I have wanted to drop a video early so I could get another one before Sunday, and I did want to make sure we were not talking about the same subject. And so far, we've not literally talked about the same subject on the same day. Um, since I started dropping mine on Sunday night after his live stream. Uh, but this one's going to be different because there's no way, there's no getting around that. We shared an event together and we will be talking about the same subjects. There's things that he said that I thought was amazing that I want to use in my videos. Um, there's things that I said that I'm sure he'd want to use in his. Um, so you're going to get the same story in two different perspectives. So uh, let's start out by saying this. I learned about Drew Bloom from my mother. So I started making videos. Uh, Timothy Dixon is the one who, who urged me to make videos because he was just such a liar. And this was during the Trump's going to be put back in office days, you know, 
where he said it three times and gave the months and they came and went. So he, Timothy Dixon is the one that, that got me riled up enough to, to be like, you know what, I want to make some videos. Well, Drew's been doing this for over 15 years now. He just had his 15 year anniversary. Uh, so he's been in the trenches doing this a long time. Uh, I'm the Johnny come lately. So, uh, I would, I would like tell my mom, Hey mom, did you, did you see my video? Did you see my video? And she's like, no, but, uh, you know, I saw this, this, Drew, this Drew guy and, uh, you need to watch his videos. He's, he's saying some really good stuff. And I'm like, you know, whatever I'm doing my own thing. It's all I can do to work and research and cut and edit and upload. I don't have time to watch anybody else's videos. So unless I'm doing research, um, so this went on for a while. Hey, mom, did you did you see my video? No, honey, I'm sure it was fine. But did you see what Drew said last night? And I'm just like, mom, why are you not watching my videos? One night she said, hey, I think I think Drew mentioned you in one of his videos. And I'm like, who's this guy that just gave me a shout out? I need to know what he's saying. Um, so I went and uh, Drew called me the Alabama Huntsman and so I was kind of like well yeah that you know I, there's no Alabama Huntsman <clears throat> so I'm like wow you know this guy is 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 got you know all these viewers and he's watched my stuff and he actually said that he liked my my you know my videos I need to take the time and watch his content so I did um started binge binge watching all of his videos and we were saying, and, and like I said, he's been saying it a lot longer. Uh, I'm the Johnny come lately. He's been, he says, we say the same thing because we're pushing towards the same mark. We have the same calling. We have the same um, doctrine minus one or two things, um, which, which is not a hill to die on. Um, so uh, I started watching his stuff and I would... I would watch we uh, my wife and I the flower girl uh, the flower girl and I would uh, and still do we we call Drew's show uh, Sunday night must see TV we watch YouTube on our television we sit there we may have you know a cup of hot chocolate or whatever watch the videos and uh, but I noticed I couldn't comment when we watch it on television because I'm a geezer and I don't know how to do that I don't even know if it's possible to comment so I made a little cubicle for my sound booth to make my videos. I would go in there, and that way I could comment in the little comment section. And uh, I saw somebody say, hey, wouldn't it be great if we could get Drew and the Woodsman to Florida at Timothy's camp meeting? And this was shortly after he released the, the dates for the camp meeting. So this was probably a month and a half maybe before uh, could even be longer. Anyway, uh, and so I looked at it and I read it and I'm like, well, that's interesting. So I'm like, yeah, I, I, I could, I, I think I'd like to do that. So I just said a simple little quick prayer, Lord, you know, if, if, if you want this and you're going to work it out, I'm willing. Um, I'm, I'm at the point in my life where I can pretty much drop everything and, and do what I need to do, you know. So that, that was just my little prayer, Lord, if, if this is what you want, I'm willing. Um, and I didn't pray a lot about it because I've said my prayer. If, if it's going to work out, it's going to work out. If it's not, it's not. Now, on urgent prayers, yeah, I will keep praying. You know, if there's an emergency, there's something right here. Yes, I'll pray over and over and over, and I'll spend hours. You know, my quiet time is prayer at night. That's, that's just when I feel best. I say a little prayer in the morning. I have communion with God all during the day, talking with him like he's just right here with me. And uh, but my deep prayer, when I pray, I have to get quiet and peaceful, and it, which is at night. A, a while later, you know, weeks, weeks, weeks go by. I don't think about it anymore. I've said my prayer. I'm not thinking about it anymore. Um, Drew gives asks for my email. I give him an email. He says, "Hey, I want to ask you a question." So, you know, I wasn't thinking about going to Florida. I was thinking, well, you know, I've been wanting to maybe join his show one time as a guest or have him, you know, cut some video that I could put in mine. Um, but we've not even spoken. So, um, yeah, I gave him my phone number. I said, uh, you know, call me anytime. 
So he calls me up. We we have our you know greetings and we tell each other you know our our perspective on each other's ministry. And he says, "Listen, you don't have to do this. There's no pressure whatsoever. But I'm going to Florida. Would you like to go as well?" Well, I'd already prayed about it. I already told God I was willing. So I was like, "Yeah, I'm there. Just let me know when. Just let me know when you're going." Um, because I had no idea that he would uh, leave the frozen north on his own dime and fly to Florida, hotels, foods, rental car, plane tickets to and from. I, I, that Listen, that's a labor of love. That's a lot to do to, to, to do uh, what we were about to do, which at this point is still all up in the air. So I'm like, yeah, man, I'm, I'm there. You know, love to meet you and uh, uh, do this with you. Um, he's like, well, pray about it. And you pray, uh, pray. Drew's a praying fool. He, I mean, he prays. The man's a prayer. Um, so I'm like, yeah, I, well, I, I already did. I, I, I'm good. Just let me know when you're going down. So we spoke a couple times in between uh, here and there and just talked a little bit. And so the time's coming. And I'm like, Drew, what hotel are you staying in? I, you know, I think it'd be good if we stayed in the same hotel for logistic reasons, unless you need your space. He's like, no, 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 no. So we, he picks the hotel. We go down. Everything's great. He texts me when he gets there. Uh, the flower girl had a headache, um, just one that just popped up. She normally doesn't get headaches. Uh, popped up, and so she was taking a nap. So it's about 1 in the afternoon. Drew's like, hey, I'm, I'm outside your door. Come out in the lobby. So we meet, we, we greet each other with a hug, uh, you know, in the name of the Lord. And we, so nice to meet you and blah, blah, blah. How was your trip? Small talk. Hey, let's get together for dinner. So that week we had lunches and dinners together. Um, and uh, we laid all this out. So the night of the event where we showed up, which would have been Tuesday night, was it Tuesday night anyway? It was the, it was the Julie Green night. We had a meeting downstairs, and so the flower girl, she loves to watch these audit videos where people go out and they start videotaping from public land, and everybody just loses their mind because after 9-11, you know, you can't possibly be videotaping for any, you know, legitimate reason nowadays. And the cops always show up, and they either know what the law is and the Constitution is or they don't. Um, you can watch these videos. So the flower girl loves these videos. So... We started to lay this out logistically. Um, you know, we looked at satellite images. We found out where parking was going to be. We found out how the how, uh, the flower girl found out how big of a crowd they were expecting. Um, she looked up on satellite where the right of way is. So you have the road, and then on the sides of the road is called the right of way, and that's public land. You can do what you need to do on public land you can't be trespassed off of it you can't be kicked off it because you're protesting there's constitutional laws that make your first amendment um, something that you can exercise pretty much when and where you want now before you do such a thing you had better do some research okay you had better know what the laws are in your state and county or city or whatever um, like in the biggest city near me Birmingham um, there was a law that went to the Supreme Court, and what it basically says is is that you can't charge a permit fee to protest. So a lot of people don't know that. They think, well, i got to get a permit. No, only if you're blocking the roads. If you want to stand on a sidewalk with a sign and preach, you don't need a permit for that. A lot of people don't know that, but you need to check because your city, state, um, county law could be in place it's just unconstitutional and it's it's writing because no one's challenged it yet so the flower girl is is really well versed in this um <clears throat> this subject so we uh we get there and the i call them the bond girls the the wives decide they want to um join this and so uh, i'll just put it this way um they went behind enemy lines by themselves um, and we're looking at a different perspective see here's another thing you well I don't want to give away too much because um, Timothy will learn and anyway um, it's for him to, to, to learn him on his own anyway um so the bond girls were 
doing their thing and uh, Drew and I were in the car and we have this conversation. All right, folks, so uh, welcome to the Alabama Wisdom. I met Drew in Florida and we are here at Timothy Dixon's gathering and we are just going to make our presence known, see where the Lord leads us. Um, this is not something that we're doing to cause trouble. We're, we actually, um, I mean, we want to reach at least somebody. If, if one person can see, you know, uh, that they need to start questioning what they're watching in this service and it's all worth it. Um, Drew and his wife here, myself and the flower girl are here. Uh, we, we did this on our own expense, him a lot more than me. Um, but, uh, what, what we, what we really want to do is, is ministry. Some people will look at this and they'll, they may say, you know what, um, that we also need to start standing up and that's, that's what we need to do. People in the end times are going to fall into delusion and it's going to take people trying to help them out of it. And, and that's, that's what we need to do. And so we are going to make our presence known. We're not going to do anything illegal. There's no intention of, of being anything other than uh, to be followers of Christ and doing what the Lord leads us to do in this, this situation. So uh, we'll see where it goes. Drew? Absolutely. You know, Ephesians 5.11 tells us, uh, have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather re reprove them. And false prophecy is an unfruitful work of darkness. And, and I think these false prophets have convinced uh, a good majority of this generation that it's not unfruitful. And they've, they've uh, spread deceit. They've preached a false gospel. So we're putting uh, boots on the ground and we're here to, to blow horn these false prophets and let them know that they have greatly transgressed God by um, deceiving a good portion of this generation with, you know, getting them to accept that, you know, false prophecy is, God is flawed. Yeah, he's flawed. That's what they teach. Yeah. And so we just want to make, uh, make them known or, or tell them, uh, come back to the truth of Jesus Christ, come back to the true gospel and stop following these false prophets for they do a tremendous amount of damage and they make a living shipwrecking the faith of tens of thousands, if not millions. So. Yeah. And, and something that, that, that we've talked about um, since meeting up is how sad it is that the followers are under such a delusion that they think this is perfectly normal Christianity. And it's, it's really so outside the bounds of sound doctrine that it, it really is heartbreaking. Yeah. Um, we've talked about how sad it is that these these people that are here they actually um and this is just my opinion jesus stopped being enough for them they're here for the show as cat kerr says they're here to hear what the prophet has to say they want to know what prophecy is happening and and jesus is just kind of put on a back seat somewhere um and so we're just here really as is and i don't mean this to sound cliche -ish, but it really is a labor of love we are not here to do anything except love and expose false doctrine and try to bring somebody back to the truth. Call them out publicly, not just behind the computer. We care about the gospel of Jesus Christ. We care about the truth. We care about the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ and, and bringing salvation to lost souls, not about the wealth transfer, not about what uh, it's all about you, 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 or me, me, me. This is about what Jesus did for us. So, yeah. So we will, uh, <clears throat> we'll take some footage and, uh, this is not going to be the main part of my video, but I did want to put a little something in there and just say how, uh, excited I am and, and how, uh, it's been just a great time here with Drew and his wife and talking with them and finding out who he is more than just comments that we make on each other's channels and how we you know say things to each other but to really get to know each other and it's just been a it's been a very very uh it's been a good time, time you know yeah up. and we've still got another day or two 
and uh, we are, we're going to do this and see how it goes and maybe there'll be some more footage maybe we'll just do what god leads us to do and and just you know wrap it up so amen all right so while the bond girls are out gathering intel like little ninjas uh drew and i are are spotting law enforcement we have law enforcement over here we have law enforcement over there um and and they were there just to direct traffic because this is not a, a an area where there's a lot of room to park on the side of the road which a lot of people did um and so we did as well i mean if if they, they're going to allow if law is going to allow them to transgress uh, a, a local law then we can as well um, which we had already looked up that law the flower girl looked up that law and saw what the law was um, so then we were told by our ninjas that um, there was law enforcement by the actual stage kind of area so <clears throat> it's not a problem you know we're, we are not breaking the law we are not in fear of the law to the point that um, you know we we feel like we're immediately going to be slammed cuffed and stuffed so we decide hey if this lasts three minutes that's three minutes we got drew had already decided this was worth all the expense and the time if i can just get a few minutes this will be worth it so uh we pop out of the car and and i'm, I'm cutting a lot out but we popped out of the car and we began doing what the lord led us to florida to do all right, folks, so this morning while I was making this video, um, Drew texted me and said, hey, you need to know about something Dixon has put out. So we talked, and I want to be extremely delicate in this matter, and I want to give Timothy Dixon the benefit of the doubt and not just call him a bold-faced liar in this instance. But there were some curse words that were uttered at the event. Now, the Dixon has said that we were using the foul language and the curse words. And what I, th what I think has happened is Dixon was told someone was letting it fly and he either assumes it was us or he was told it was us, but that is a lie. So Mr. Dixon, I think that you were not able to or you did not care to verify, trying to give you the benefit of the doubt, as to who actually was letting the foul language fly, but it was not us. In fact, Drew and I have spoken, and we have $10,000 for anyone who can produce video of the two of us using such foul language, because we know it does not exist. But foul language was used, and it was used by one of his people who were following the prophets. So, folks, from here on out, you are going to hear some language. I'll tell you when it's safe again, okay? This is a language alert, now, let me tell you what you're about to see. You're going to see now a video that Dixon put out talking about what what we did. So let's let's go to his video first. And this was made you know, maybe two days, two or three days after the event, uh, which we showed up. But this is this is this is so uh, important that you know what his perspective is, what he's telling his people, and what his people will believe just simply because he says it. There's a guy come out here the other night on a, a loudspeaker and uh, stood out there in the street and and he calls himself a defender of Christ. Uh, that's pitiful. Uh, that's pitiful. If you are a Christian, you don't handle things like that. You don't you don't get out there and and, and, and do all the stuff and that was going on out there in the streets just all the cussing and everything else i mean that ain't that ain't god i don't care who says it is it ain't you don't handle things like that <clears throat> yeah alabama woodsman you dumb redneck you ain't supposed to get out there in the street with a bullhorn and be cussing all out there in the name of the lord Earl, are you on the computer again i tell you what you low down did it for another my daddy was right about you he said you weren't no good 
gotta go. I knew every test that your enemy was gonna try to put you in. All right, we are here to call out false prophets. Julie Green, you are a false prophet. Timothy Dixon, you are false prophets. You have violated the gospel of Jesus Christ. So we knew that we were going to get booed, um, <clears throat> which we didn't actually get booed, but, you know, there was an opposition. Once people realized what was going on, they were going to try to drown us out. And we totally calculated that in. It's not a big deal. Um, but that's how it, it kicked off. OK, um, that that's the voice you heard was Drew's. I'm holding the the sign, false prophet sign with three names on it. Uh, so it, it just progressed. Now we knew they could not keep up that level of noise. They could not drown us out. But at that time, law enforcement is moving towards us. Okay. Which is totally reasonable. Now, quick note about law enforcement, Jackson County, Florida Sheriff's Department. There were three there and then a fourth showed up. Uh, my, having been a lawman for 20 years, my estimation of these four deputies, let me just say that to be instantly thrown into this kind of situation where you have two people trying to exercise their First Amendment rights and you have a bunch of people who are about to become very, very unchristian-like, um, for them to be in the middle and handle it the way they did, I have nothing but praise for them. This is not a, an easy situation for them. At no time did they tell us, hey, you're going to have to stop this. Y'all need to shut up. Put the bullhorn down. Y'all need to leave. At no time did they say that because they know the Constitution. Not every law enforcement department is like that. Um, the, the Jackson County Sheriff's deputies that were there were amazingly courteous, respectful, they're under a lot of stress now. They just had something pop off, and they were probably not even prepared for this. And what they did was um, they, they protected our rights, but they also protected us because these people came after us. I'm going to show you footage. They came after us. Um, the gentleman who started to let the curse words fly, which... Dixon must mistakenly think that was us. I'm showing, going to show you the footage. The, the vulgarity, the, the language alert is still in play. If you, if you don't want to hear this, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, I don't know how to. I'll try to put an alert in the text above to tell you when it's about to happen. Mr. Dixon, that was not us. That was someone who loves the prophets who decided to let it fly. Something about someone's mother and the act of fornication was what was said. Uh, but let's watch the video. Please come back to the truth of Jesus Christ. We follow Jesus Christ according to his holy word. Julie Green prophesied Nancy Pelosi would be dead by the midterm. It did not happen. She prophesied the great exodus of 2022. It did not happen. There was no wealth transfer. She prophesied that Merrick Garland would be dead by the end of the year. It did not happen. So you saw me move in front of Drew. Um, and that's basically because dental work in Alabama is a lot cheaper than dental work in the north. Um, and I, you know, was prepared for that. But anyway, um, <clears throat> yeah, there was a, a little short lady that came up that tried to get to Drew. And uh, she actually grabbed... 
uh, for the bullhorn and, and ripped a little piece off. It's not a big deal. It just pops right back on. But uh, legally, that is harassment. All right. She could have been arrested for that. But the police department, you know, and I'm not saying I wanted her to be arrested. Um, they they were they were giving they were in restraint. OK, they were there to handle the situation, not just start, start throwing cuffs on people. And I commend them for that. Uh, but you can see I moved in between Drew and the person who was physically harassing probably low-grade assault or, or whatever, but it's not a big deal. Um, so that's why you see me move in and then Drew move back behind because that was the plan. Now, the sheriff's department told this lady, look, you can't be touching these people. Leave them alone. Um, <clears throat> and and she was all like, why, why, why? Well, you know, you just can't touch them, okay? So the sheriff's department acted accordingly. And then they started, and, and it was the, the deputy, the, the lady, you know, came to me and said, Hey, look, can you guys just move across the street? I'm talking about what's behind Oh, a little side note. If you're watching Timothy Dixon's Rumble channel and you can barely hear it, it's because they turned their master volume down so low so that you couldn't hear us. You can hear this simple phone recording, how it was, the sound was perfect. You could hear us, you could hear them. But see, Dixon's people don't want you to know what we said because they don't want to address the false lies, the, the false prophecies. They don't want you to hear that. You people on Rumble that follow Dixon, they don't want you to hear our questions because they are cowards. That's why they don't allow comments on their YouTube channels. You can't avoid it on Rumble. But on YouTube, you can just make it where no one can comment because they're cowards. They don't want their flock hearing questions. It's part of the control they have on people. Jesus said in Matthew 7, there would be many false prophets. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy? And I will say to them, I never knew you. I never knew you. There you go. So at this point, we are still on the tent side of the road, and this man has gotten behind me and Drew. Okay, I can only guard Jews front. All right, I, I'm I'm big, but I'm not big enough to guard his front and back. Um, so this man is behind Drew. This is an issue. All right, the sheriff's department is still trying to figure out what's going on. They're handling the people in the front who are trying to get to us, and now someone has come around the back to get to us. Luckily, even if he was thinking about violence, he did not do any violence. What it's all about. There you go. I agree. Why don't you serve him in truth then? Serve him in truth. Why do you follow false prophets? We were warned. Matthew 24. Jesus warned us. So, of course, uh, Drew and I are, are demon-possessed, and she wants to pray for the demon that's... Um, so far, Drew's the only one speaking, so they don't even know I'm there. <clears throat> um, pray for the demon that's pushing Drew uh, to do these things. And, of course, it's, oh, we're just so persecuted. We've made hell so mad. That's why this person's out there with a bullhorn saying this. So they are spinning it. And, of course, the people that are in the crowd are like, tell us more, tell us more, feed us more, feed us more. But trust me, people, there were some that were listening. So Julia shook. She says, hey, we're going to we're going to shout and we're going to drown out everything um, or we're going to drown them out or whatever she said, um, which was really working good for us, because <clears throat> even though we had a bullhorn, you, the throat pays the price for what you're doing so we actually needed a break so them saying we're just going to drown them out we're going to shout and drown them out was actually a blessing for us so thank you julie i uh <laughs> we appreciate it
to Jesus with a true heart. But not when you're doing it under false, under a false gospel. Okay, so you can see that we have now moved across the street. <clears throat> And how that happened was when they first, when we first got here and we were being confronted, the law was there. Um, they were not telling us we had to stop. They were not telling us we had to leave. But the, the, the lady deputy did say, hey, look, could y'all just move across the street? And um, I said, no, we're fine right here. Uh, and to be honest, um, that, that was not an unreasonable request that she made. But, you know, sometimes... You know, sometimes you're a bulldozer and you really need to be a shovel. And I was a bulldozer at the time. So I was like, no, you know, we're, we're fine right here. I wasn't disrespectful, but I said, no, no, ma'am, we're fine right here. Uh, you know, we're, we're not going to move across the, the street. Well, something happened in front and the deputy left me alone and she went behind me and, and asked Drew, hey, look, could y'all just move across the street? And Drew um, said, yeah, sure, we'll move across the street. So I, I asked Drew, hey, why are we moving across the street, you know? And he said he just thought it was the right thing to do, and it was the right thing to do. Uh, you know, looking when you're in it, okay, I am trying to protect Drew. I am trying to um, uh, do what I need to do as far as, as, as sharing, uh, you know, the gospel and, and, and how these false doctrines and false devils, uh, these prophets are, are doing their thing and all that stuff. So I'm in the mix of it. You have to get in a frame of mind when you do that. So now I'm also, because we were just now getting there, we're not sure what law enforcement is going to do. So I don't want to give an inch. Okay. And that was the wrong thing to do. So Drew's decision to move us across the street was the right decision because now that created a buffer zone. You'll notice when the camera pans back on us, there's no law enforcement around us, okay? Because they know we're not a threat. And I'll talk about that more in a little bit. Follow Jesus Christ in truth and sincerity. Somebody, oh somebody, question these false prophets. Do not just blindly follow them. Don't you find it just a little puzzling Why? how everything they say doesn't come to pass? Why is that? Oh, somebody serve Jesus in truth and sincerity. Why does nobody question them? So originally there were three deputies. This is the fourth one who's showed up, and he's he's parked right, like right there, which is tactically the sound thing for him to do because if someone's going to get slam cuffed and stuffed, you got to have a car to stuff them in. Um, <clears throat> so th there was no problem. I, I didn't care the the lights, you know. In a little while, some guy tries to strobe light us, and really all he did was was light us up so people could actually see us, which was a good thing. But the deputies shut that down, which, you know, they, they didn't want any antagonizing activities from the tent side of the street. And that's cool. But it actually worked in our favor, so it wasn't bothering me at all. Music will not help you on Judgment Day. You will be asked, why did you continue to follow the false prophets? Why, when you knew that they had falsely prophesied? Julie Green sends you on scavenger hunts. Look for this word in the news. Look for that word in the news. She even had a word that said, she said, God said, the word bullhorn will be in the news for a very unusual reason. Nobody finds that odd. Did God tell Isaiah or Jeremiah or Ezekiel to tell the people to go look for different words? No. They were holy true prophets of God. So here's actually the, the place where Drew said, hey, mom, I, I got to get some water. So he goes to get some water and we kind of let our guard down a little bit. I uh, I think I'm still recording at this point. Drew's getting some water. We're, we're kind of making like little small talk, you know, how do you think this is going? 
um, you know, we're just we're just really talking. I'm not going to say I remember everything, but I do this. Remember, no, I do remember. This is where he said, I got to get some water. So he goes to the car to get some water, the back of the car. So you just heard Drew say, oh, so we got a guy dropping F-bombs, huh? Uh, Folks, that was not us. That was not us. That was a guy from the tent side of the street dropping F-bombs. We're going to look a little bit more at that. But Mr. Dixon, sir, that was not us. You may need to get your information straight and issue a correction. So earlier in in the, the cut of the crowd, Julie was praying that um, the enemy's mouth would be shut. Uh, she saw us as the enemy or the enemy working through us uh, was was probably more accurate. Um, and and so they are they actually prayed that we would shut up. Now, had the Lord honored their prayer, the bullhorn could have broken. It could have the batteries could have died in it. Uh, it could have broken. One lady uh, tried to snatch it away from us. And, of course, the deputies were like, hey, don't touch them. Um, We could have been uh, shut down by law enforcement. Lightning could have fell and struck us. Had the Lord honored their prayer, the the prayer of Baal prophets, uh, the prophets of Baal, um, we could have been shut down on any, at any point. The law enforcement was there to do that should God had wanted that done. There was any there were any number of whales this could have whales, any number of ways this could have failed. But they didn't. So we continued um, basically until our voices gave out and we had nothing else left to say. But let me tell you, and, and Drew probably showed you, see I, I don't know what Drew said in his live stream because I'm making this before his live stream. But I just want to read to you some of the things that we said, um, and he may have shown this. So for Julie Green, there would be a wealth transfer by the end of 2022. It did not happen. Nancy Pelosi was to die before the 2022 midterms. She is not dead. Trump was to return to the White House in 2022. He didn't. Herschel Walker was to win the Senate race in Georgia, and he lost Julie Green. Uh, Merrick Garland was to be dead by the end of 22. He was not dead. The midterm red wave for the Republicans to take over the House and the Senate did not happen. We barely took the Senate. Charles King Charles would never be kinked, and he would be stripped of his power. He has not been stripped of his power, and everyone in the world except Julie Green is calling him King Charles because he is the king. Just because he's not had his coronation means nothing. All the, all the headlines overseas say King Charles. The land cannot be without a king or queen. The instant his mother died, he became king coronation or not. The Supreme Court, she said Justice Roberts would be removed from the bench in 2022. Justice Roberts is still on the Supreme Court. And in an interview, Mr. Dixon was talking to Mr. Schultz on Elijah's streams, you know, the make-believe hour. Mr. Dixon had even prophesied and dreamed that Roberts was going to be an ally to Christianity. She's predicting he's going to be removed from the bench. Dixon is predicting and prophesying that he's going to be an ally to the Christians. Y'all might want to get together before you start letting these prophecies out. That doesn't even make sense. That's how ridiculous these two are. And Tulsi Gabbard, she said Tulsi Gabbard would go to the Republican Party. Now, she did leave the Democrats, but she was already telling us that she was going to leave. 
but she did not go to the Republican Party. She became an independent. So those were just some of the lies we brought up uh, with the use of the bullhorn. All right, so in this next clip, um, which is actually the language alert, if you look, the deputies are there, Drew's there, I'm there, and in the very middle, there's a short person with uh, like maybe a plaid pants, almost look like pajama bottoms or something maybe. <clears throat> um, he's very short. He's white hair. He's in the very middle, and he's very short. He's the one dropping F-bombs. So this is my footage that I shot when Drew went to the car to get a drink of water. And this is just proof that we were not dropping F-bombs. That, that's all this, this reason why I included this clip. You want to wait till they stop singing and, and wait till she starts preaching? Because they're not going to move us, so we're, we know we're safe. Yeah. Let's just wait till they stop singing, if you want to. Oh, my God. So let me set up. They began to sing in order to drown us out, thinking we would just finally leave. Um, but we weren't done. So you can hear me asking Drew, <clears throat> in order to save our voices, do you just want to be quiet till they finish singing and then we'll pick it back up? You can hear my voice. You can hear Drew's voice. And then you hear the little old man across the street dropping F-bombs with the same mouth he kissed his mama with. That proves this is not us, Mr. Dixon. This is your follower. Here we are in the end times. Everybody says they love Jesus, so they honor them, they honor him with their lips. But when it comes to the actual matter of the heart, you don't honor him. You don't abide in his word. You abide in delusion. To break him in half, in front of these fucking little Roman bags. That's a very nice language there, sir. So, folks, it was that gentleman who is dropping F-bombs, and there is more. Um, I'm going to show you all that I have. You could tell that was not us. I'm standing next to Drew. Anything that I would have uttered would have been pretty much just as loud as Drew because we were standing right beside each other while he was bullhorning. The man across the street was dropping F-bombs, Mr. Dixon. Would like to know what you have to say about that. I really don't want to speak with anybody. Would you just leave us alone? I just wanted to ask you. Uh, we don't want to answer questions, sir. We're just here to exercise our First prophets. Amendment right. Follow false prophets and nobody's to... waking up. I'm sorry? I'm not here to cause... Julie Green is okay. a false prophet. It's not a debate. So Drew's on the bullhorn, and this gentleman very stealth, stealthily uh, walks away from law enforcement and then comes across the street, and now he's confronting us on our side of the street. The first thing I tell him is, sir, I don't want to answer any questions. I just, just leave me alone. Just let us do our thing. I don't want to talk to you. And he says, basically, have you read Romans 12? Well, Romans 12, you know. So I said, no, I've, I've read Matthew 24, 24 that talks about false prophets, signs and wonders, delusion, leading people astray. And he was kind of like, uh, now, first of all, let me say the gentleman was very, very, calm, respectful, non-threatening, okay? I don't have a problem with this gentleman, save this one issue. He said Romans 12 talks about being peaceful, being at peace. But in Romans 12, it says, by all means, if at all possible, live at peace. We're at peace, sir. No, Each we're, one of you we, have we are exercising our First Amendment spotted. right. If at all possible, be at peace, live in peace, be peaceful. Um... Here's the problem, sir. I don't know who you are, and I'm not trying to disrespect you at all, okay? You were merely uh, opposing us and doing it very respectfully. No problem with you, sir. Save this. You can't sacrifice doing what's right for peace. You think that we should have been peaceful, okay? And so we should not call out the province. See, these people who make these comments on our channels are like, well, have you gone and talked to him? Have you gone and talked to him and told him? Listen, um, Jesus did not go to the Pharisees privately and say, you know, I just, I really wish you just wouldn't, you know, lead people astray. You're not going to go to heaven yourselves, and you're not letting other people, and I just wanted to come to you in private and, and in peace. Oh, no. 
No. You know why? Because they knew what they were doing. Jesus called them out, and he knew what they were doing. He didn't go to the uh, the temple, and when he was flipping over tables and yelling and, and, and carrying on without sinning, he didn't go to them first quietly and say, you know, you're, you're making a, a, a market of, of, of my father's temple. Would you, would you kind of please stop doing that? Because, you know, it's just not the right thing to do. No, he let them have it. So don't give me this stuff about, oh, you need to be peaceful. I'm not going to sacrifice telling people they're in false doctrine and listening to false prophets so we can be peaceful. Because I dare say, Mr. Dixon wouldn't listen anyway. I've been making videos for years. Drew's been making them for probably five times as long as I've been doing it. If Mr. Dixon doesn't know that he is an error by now, he is just as delusional as his followers. You don't sacrifice telling the truth just to keep the peace. Turn away from the truth. If I sit here long enough and keep screaming at them, they'll arrest me. You want to know? They'll take me to jail right now. Why do I bother you that your prophet just told me prophesying? Why does that bother you that they lie in the name of Jesus Christ? Motherfucker. But your your ears are Giants get their fucking heads cut off. That's why it's very enjoyable in entertainment. You don't care that they lie in the name of Jesus Christ. You don't care that they lie in the name of the Most High. Why? Why does that not affect you? You all claim to love Jesus, yet you don't care that these men and women lie in the name of Jesus Christ. It's astonishing that you don't care. You do that by showing up and singing the songs and it's okay. So you can clearly see it's this gentleman that's dropping F-bombs, not us. Trust me, if we would have been dropping F-bombs, there would be all kinds of footage of it, but there's not. It would have come across the loudspeaker, but it didn't because it's a lie, Mr. Dixon. We dropped no curse words. Know what they're doing. No, I'm not adding to it, dude. I'm David. 
You're looking at David standing right here. I will run at because they the love enemy. their delusion. Straight toward them. Love the delusion. Follow Jesus in truth and sincerity. So, folks, there's the truth about who was speaking foul language. Um, there's there's my evidence. Now, Mr. Dixon, I challenge you and all your people, let me see your video. Let's see your evidence that we were speaking foul language. $10,000 and anyone who can prove it, okay? And, of course, we will look at any footage you have. See, we're across the street, people. We're on a megaphone. You can hear plainly what's being said. You can hear this man who says he's David. Yeah, that's that's Robin Bullock teaching. Uh, so there it is, folks. That's the truth about who's dropping F-bombs at a Timothy Dixon meeting. And it weren't us. All right, so I've got uh, one, possibly two other things I want to show you. So we're going to... We're going to move on from from this gentleman. Um, folks, let's let's uh, not forget to remember him in our prayers. Uh, listen, I have not always portrayed Christianity in the best light. Okay, A while back, I had a mouth and. Um, uh, how do I want to put this? Um, it needs he needs correction, but I. Um, I don't know uh, how he will get it when all he's really doing is chasing prophets. See, these people are chasing prophets. He came to see her. He said, and I cut it out, he said he that uh, something, something, blah, 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 I came to see this beautiful woman that I've always wanted to see. That's why he was there. Um, not to say serve the Lord. He wants to see Julie Green. Hey, dude, you can see her. But we're going to teach truth, something Julie Green and uh, Timothy Dixon and Robin Bullock, they don't know how to do that. You know, maybe that's why that got all over you, because truth got on you. So I want you to notice something else about this this little clip. <clears throat> his His fellow Christians are there trying to calm him down, saying, look, you're just adding to it. And they're trying to give him correction. And what does he say? Uh, not me. I'm I'm David here. He is totally delusional at what right and wrong is, and he's trying to act like a victim. He's David. No, sir, you're a gutter mouth. That's what you were, okay? Own it. Correct it. But he can't do it because he's delusional, as were probably 99% of the people underneath that tent that night. This man obviously uh, struck a nerve in this man. But here's the thing. And I want to be delicate when I say this. He knows there's truth. He just doesn't like the truth. That's all that is. He knows it's the truth. He doesn't like it. And so he is going to act like this. Now, he said he would come straight at us. And trust me, they came at us. One guy tried to, uh, one lady tried to grab the bullhorn out of out of uh, Bloom's hand. Um, the other guy came across the street, which he was respectful. I don't have a problem with him. And another guy we think was Timothy Dixon's brother. He circled all the way around to try to get behind us. Um, and they were told to stay on their side of the street. We were told to stay on our side of the street. You notice that the law enforcement really weren't concerned with us. They had their backs towards us you have to understand what you're seeing tactically law enforcement had their backs to us that means they did not fear us what they feared were the good church going folks up underneath that tent that's who they feared because that's who they spent all their time managing not us folks there's a message there see while working for the large city i worked for in law enforcement i was also on the riot team and what would have happened, okay, because these officers were not stupid. I can tell you right now they weren't. Um, the, what, what would have happened had they perceived us to be a threat is they would have put a law enforcement officer on the side of the road with us so that if we made a move or we crossed the line, there would be no reactionary gap. They could have pounced right on us immediately. They didn't put an officer with us. Because they knew we were not a threat. 
All right, let's move on to this next thing that I want to talk about. It, it's something really important that I think you should know. First uh, Corinthians says uh, a lot. Jesus taught a lot about uh, forgiving, forgiving one another, and forgiveness. And if if your brother has aught against you, and you go to him, and uh, none of that would never stand up underneath the gospel that Jesus has preached. I'm talking about Jesus. So this was a continuation from the intro clip. Um, <clears throat> what he's talking about is, well, they, if they have aught with me, they should come talk to me. And no, M Mr. Mr. Dixon, you you fail to understand what it means to have aught with your brother. See, let's just say me and you have property together, and you put your fence over the line onto my property, and I don't like it. Okay. Then I should go to you and say, you know, hey, you, you, you obviously put your your fence three foot over into my property. Um, you know, can, can you move it back a little bit? That's that is scriptural. Okay, that's scriptural. But I'm just going to say this, Mr. Dixon. I am going to leave my email address in the comments below. If you're not going to watch these videos, some of your peeps will watch it. You can email me anytime if you want to talk, okay? We can go to a very public place, just me and you. You can record it. I'll record it. I don't need your goons there. I won't have any goons there. It'll just be me and you in a public place where both of us can record it so no one can say this one said that and, and the other one said this. It'll all be clear. And we'll go have a talk. We'll go have a coffee, all right? I've got all the time in the world, Mr. Dixon. I'm just waiting on you to tell me when and where we can go have a conversation. I'll wait. All right, folks, that's all I'm going to do. I've, I've tried to load the actual video that's on Rumble, and I had it on here at once, and somehow something got corrupted, so I removed it, and now I can't load it back on the actual video that they put on Rumble because there's some things in that video that I would like to do just a standard review of. So I'm going to do another video this week <clears throat> um, actually uh, dividing their video and seeing the 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 lies and the, the moronic just vain jangling of just word vomit. Um, but I, I can't do that in this video. I don't know why it's not loading, so I'm going to end this video. Uh, I would like to say that it was an honor and a pleasure to, uh, to meet the Drew family, the Drew Bloom family. Um, his wife is absolutely amazing. Drew is an amazing guy um, listening to uh, his life, his life story, which I love to, to listen to people's life stories. Um, so I, I had a, a good time with the Bloom family in Florida. Uh, Mr. Dixon, my, uh, and, and this goes with anybody. Hey, hey, Mr. Bullock, you want to have a meeting somewhere? Same offer. Just me, you, a coffee shop somewhere. No, you know, don't, don't bring any goons. I won't bring any goons. You can record. I'll record. We'll have what we need to say to each other. See where each other stands face to face. You can correct me, I will correct you, and then we can go about our ways, okay? By the way, didn't you find it interesting that uh, Robin Bullock was a no-show? Maybe it was the latest news that hit about him where he didn't want to go. I don't know. It could, it could have been a scheduling conflict. But see, the scheduling conflict almost doesn't really convince me because he's known about this for months he's known about this but the news that came out about him a day or two ago was pretty heavy um, if you don't know what uh, I'm talking about it's it's not scandalous it's just the fact that another person proves a big name proves he is a false prophet um, there's video out there where this guy is, has, has proven that he's a false prophet and, and all that kind of stuff. But anyway, uh, believe it or not, that night uh, that we went out there and shared uh, on the side of the road with those people, uh, the fact that they are, they are following false prophets, 
I did take an aspirin ahead of time because I knew I would get a migraine because of all that nonsense. However, in making this video, I now still need another aspirin. God bless you.